HRT causes cancer, doesn't it? Well, that's just one of the questions I get asked time and time again. And it seems that despite the best efforts of so many incredible campaigners in the menopause world, there's still an awful lot of confusion and misinformation out there. So I thought it'd be helpful to hop on here and bust some of the myths that still surround HRT, maybe once and for all. Well, okay, first up, let's dive into that cancer claim. Now, this really is one of the biggest myths surrounding HRT, and that's that it increases the chance of getting breast cancer. Scary stuff. The truth? Well, a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2020 found that women who take estrogen-only HRT for more than 20 years actually have a lower risk of developing breast cancer and a lower risk of dying from breast cancer when compared to women not taking HRT. Now there is a small increased risk of developing breast cancer in women who take estrogen with a synthetic progesterone, that's the older form of HRT, but not with the newer body identical form of progesterone. So where did this fear come from? Well, it was because of the now widely discredited Women's Health Initiative study that was published in 2002. And this made a huge number of really worrying claims linking HRT to things like breast cancer, stroke, dementia, so many more things. The problem? Well, the results of that study had made it to the press before they'd had time to be reviewed properly by the researchers. And not only that, but the researchers were looking at an old form of HRT. But you know, by then the headlines had been written. The damage had been done and HRT prescribing literally dropped off a cliff, leaving many, many women, millions of women, to struggle with their symptoms. And I think this is probably the fact that enrages me the most about midlife women's healthcare. There are many others too. But that we should be made to fear our own natural hormones. Instead of replacing lost body identical hormones, our doctors seem perfectly happy to prescribe synthetic drugs to try and alleviate symptoms, often with significant side effects. I'm talking about things like statins, bisphosphonates, antidepressants, to name but a few. And while we're on the subject of cancer, another myth that I'd like to bust is that you can't take it if you've had cancer. And again, this is incorrect. If you've had breast cancer, some specialists, specialists, will still prescribe certain forms of HRT, regulated HRT. Women with breast cancer, past or present, can use localised vaginal hormones because they stay within the vagina and they can significantly help ease symptoms of vaginal dryness, irritation and recurrent bladder and pelvic infections. Of course, this needs to be done on an individualised basis with experienced and trained healthcare professionals, but it's perfectly possible to take HRT following a breast cancer diagnosis and treatment, and I know many women who do. Well, another myth about HRT that I want to clear up is that it can only help with hot flushes. Again, incorrect. We have estrogen receptors all over our body as women. So unsurprisingly, when our hormone levels start to fall, a whole manner of symptoms will arise achy joints, itchy skin, dry eyes, anxiety, poor sleep, feeling angry, tinnitus, bleeding gums, vertigo, recurrent UTIs. I mean, the list, it goes on and on and on. You know, the symptoms experienced by women with lowering rates of hormones is almost endless, but there is no need to suffer. The good news is that HRT will reduce the symptoms associated with lowering levels of hormones. Well, finally, and this is a big one, the myth that you can't take HRT over the age of 60. Certainly hope that's not true because I'm 60. And it's also incorrect. You know, I've got so many women who come to me say they've been turned away from having HRT due to their age. And you know, I get why some GPs may be reluctant to prescribe it if it's for the first time. Over 60, there's likely to have been a gap of many years without your natural hormones. But replacement therapy is often a case of giving smaller amounts and being carefully monitored to allow the body to readjust. And that's it. It's really important to know that there is no upper age limit and there is no set end date. The classic example that I refer back to here is my own mother and she's given me permission to share this story. She was struggling to sleep, having been taken off HRT during her 60s because she was told, 
you don't need this anymore. Well, she went back on my advice at the age of 80 and she's been taking it ever since and she now sleeps well and feels so much better for it and I'm happier that she is feeling well. And of course, we all know how precious sleep is for our overall well-being, not to mention our mental health. So there we have it, a few more Menno myths busted today and I really hope that this was helpful. Do please share it, share it far and wide with your girlfriends, mothers, wives, colleagues, you know, you name it. We really need to get this message out there. There is absolutely no need to struggle and suffer with menopause symptoms. I'll make sure that we put plenty of resources below. I actually recorded a video previously about how to talk to your GP. So do give that a watch. And we've also so much helpful information over on lizardwellbeing.com. Plus, if you are looking to really take charge of your health, including tackling menopause symptoms and living better than ever, you'll find so much useful information in my new book. It's called A Better Second Half. And it's something that I've been working on for the past few years. It's very close to my heart. I hope you love it. I'm reviewing the very latest scientific research, putting it to the test to find out what really works, busting quite a few myths along the way on all sorts of things. Well, you'll find a link to pre-order below and yeah, go be one of the first to read it. So as ever, go well and no, I am not funded by Pharma, <laughs> never taken a penny to flog HRT. This is an entirely independent review. And I look forward to seeing you here next time. Go well, bye-bye.